chapter 5. Let's look at from verse 16. What does it say? First, the story chapter 5 from verse 16. It says, Rejoice evermore, pray without season. And in verse 18, it says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And it is from here that lie emanated from because of lack of understanding of the word of God. When the Bible says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. We now believe that in everything we are suffering, in all the poverty, the problems, the death, the sickness, the sorrow, we should give thanks for all these things that are God's will, wrongly believed. That is where the lie came from. And when you see something happens to you, even a prominent man of God will come and tell you, oh, mama, you know, I know you lost your son, your only child. Please just take out, you know, you know, this is God's will. Just, the Bible says God's will. We were made to understand that that is just a lie. Amen. That that is just a lie. When you are living in poverty, and you know, we pray, and this world prevails, you struggle to see how your children go to school. You have become afford to pay your house rent. And when you meet a man of God, he prays for you and says, look, just give thanks for all these things are God's will. A young man lost, you know, his just newly wedded wife. And by the time he was consoled, he was told, brother, just take her, you know, you know, it's the will of God. And at times, when you are asking God to intervene in your situation, you also begin to tell God, oh, God, if it's your will, let it come to pass. Who told you? The Bible makes us to understand that evil does not come from God. And we were made to understand. Just because people did not understand what that place was saying, they now believe God was saying those evil things are God's will. What is First Testament chapter 5, verse 18? What was it telling us? In everything, give thanks to God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything you are passing through, the apostle was saying, we know that tribulation will come. We know at times you will be sad. At times, tough time will come. But when this thing come, make sure you give thanks to God because God expects you to be thanking him always. God expects you. This is the will of God concerning you. In the will of God is that God wants to see you happy. God wants to see you rejoicing. God wants to see you appreciating him. God doesn't want you to be, you know, God wants to see you happy, you know, all the time, rejoicing. That is the will of God for you. It's not those things that are happening. But God, it was just say, look, when they happen, just in all things, thank God. And that is the prevailing power of a child of God. And if you look at the book of Job, we saw another lie. When you're telling somebody that there's lie in the Bible, say, eh? Holy Scripture, there's lie there. Let us see it again before we proceed. Job chapter 1, verse 16. Remember the story of Job. What happened to Job? There was a drama between Satan and God. A drama that took place in heaven. Satan was going with the sons of God, that is angel, who had going to present himself. And Satan joined. And when they got to heaven, God looked at him and said, ah, what are you looking for? <laughs> you know, in their conversation, he said they have been going up and down, you know, trying to... Now, God now asked him, he said, have you considered... Did you see the drama that was going on? Job was here on earth, so Job does the mind in business, JJ. But Satan and God were, you know, debating on Job. Have you considered my servant? There is nobody like him. He's so faithful. He's so righteous. He's so perfect. Satan said, ah, leave that one. Now, because you have given him everything, you have gave him everything. God said, what do you mean? That man is, you know, he said, okay, let me just, God allow Satan. He said, okay, go. Take those things you want to take from him. See, if we not, Satan will say, look, if I take those things, it will cost you. God said, yeah, go. That was a drama going on in heaven. And Job was there. He didn't know what was going on. And when Satan came, he started taking those things one after the other. 
people that were, you know, uh, watching over Job's flock, goat, you know, before you know it, something will just happen. The enemy will come, destroy them. The children were marrying in their brother's house. Before you know, fire just came. People, things just happened that within a twinkle of an eye, Job lost everything he had. Now, what is the lie that we discovered there? Job 1 verse 16. While he was yet speaking, that is somebody that came to report what happened. There came another and said, the fire of God is falling from heaven and had burned up the sheep and his servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. This person came and reported that the fire of God came down and burned. Was it the fire of God? Was it God that sent the fire? Was it God that sent the fire? It was not. It was the devil. It was the devil. The devil did everything to make sure that he frustrated Job, to make sure that Job caused God. But that man only came. As you mean the man even came and said, ah, why were there? Fire came down. Have you seen the sentence? Fire came down. People would have said, ah, ah, fire. From where? Ah, ah. Some people say, maybe it's God though. Some people say, no, no, no. God cannot send fire. This should be the work of the devil. Do you understand me now? This should be the work of the devil. But he came and said, fire of God. That was a lie. It was not the fire of God. And look at another lie that Job himself said. But the Bible says even he lied, even though he lied, he was still perfect. Why? Because of what followed the lie. Job chapter 1, verse 21. And Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return tither. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said God gave, and God, who told it was God that took them away? God only allowed Satan to do what he wanted to do. Satan collected everything God gave him. So God did not give and take. If you're a father, you love your son, can you do something that will make your son to feel bad? You can't do something that will make your son to feel sad. When things happen to us that make us sad, it is not from our God. It is the enemy. But the Bible makes us to understand, even when these things happen, even when they happen, do not worry. Try to rejoice. Appreciate God. Because God wants to see you appreciating him always. That is God's will for you. And that will cannot be perfected until the work is complete. What is the work? I go to prepare a place for you. And when I'm done, I'll come back and take you unto myself. So that where I am, there you will be also. Until the heaven and earth shall pass away. That will will not be perfected. God wants you to live in happiness. God doesn't want to live in a sorrowful world like this. So no matter what you are passing through, just appreciate God. The only way for you to overcome what you are passing through is by appreciating God. That was what made Paul and Silas to overcome. When they, Paul and Silas went out for evangelism, imagine you go out for evangelism to go and preach. Before you know, Agbo just came and beat you up. After beating you, they take you to prison and lock you up. Let me tell you what can happen. Some people say, ah, this God, ah, we went to do the work of God. He said, God not seen again. Some people begin to question God. Some people begin to complain. Some people begin to cry. Some people will even drop their Bible. Some people say, ah, if, if, in fact, if this way will not work, I cannot serve. Let me go and serve Satan and know that when I die, you know, some will be discouraged. Some will be frustrated. But what did Paul and Silas did? They remember what the Bible says. In all these things, give thanks to God. They stood up. They started praising God. That's what I said. Paul and Silas praised and they sang. They started praising God. Somebody that is in prison you know, started praising God. And that thing provoked God. And God said, wow. Even when this is in problem, they are still worshipping me. Let me go down and enjoy my worship. And when he was coming down to enjoy his worship, only his leg created earthquake. And there was earthquake. The prison doors were open. What does it mean? When you praise God in your difficult situation, 
and God comes into a situation, that situation will be solved. Have you seen that? When you praise God, even when problem has, you know, you, you praise God, you are indirectly inviting God to come into your situation. Then when you cry, when you complain, when you question God, you know, you pray, you may pray and pray and pray and pray, God will send his angel. Okay, just go and solve the angel come. But when God come himself in person, that situation will be terminated. Say amen to that. I prophesy to you, as many of you that are listening to the sound of my voice, when you begin to praise God in your own situation, God present will be found in Jesus' name. Enough is enough. Let not be deceived again. We are not created to come and suffer. Not because you are serving God, then you are supposed to suffer. No. What you are passing through as tribulation, persecutions, you know, they are not God's will. Enough is enough. Stop believing they are not God's will. But there is reason why some of this didn't happen. There are reasons why they happen. If you want to ask yourself, why do this thing happen? If it's not God's will, then why do they happen? That is what we are looking at today. Why do some of these things happen to us? We are going to look like the reason why they happen to us. Amen. I want to be very brief. I want to give you 1,001 reasons why this affliction, all this sorrow, why they happen to us. I told you of a story of a woman who, you know, the, he, she and the husband have been praying for years and they got a child. Before you know it, the man died. And the woman tried to probably fry a car, you know, under the sun, under the rain, to train up this child. Nursery, primary, second, and third child is university. By the time the child finished university, went for service, succeeded, came out. The day to come back home, to come and, you know, I let, I've finished, I've, I've run the race, I've finished, let, at least let me go and see my mom. Because we know the future is brighter. The future is, you know, in fact, we have arrived. On his way coming back, the boy had an accident and died. Why must it happen? But the Bible says, even if this kind of thing happen, you should not question God. You should not, you should only what? Give thanks. Appreciate God. Because God has a will for you. What is that will? He wants to see you. Some Bible version, some Bible um, um, version says, you know, for this is what God expects from you. Amen. I think that is good news. Good news says, in everything, give thanks, for this is what God expects from you. Amen. So, let's look at today's topic. Today's topic, we are looking at 1,001 reasons why some of this evil happened to us. Number one, it is very, very clear, according to the scripture we read today, when the apostles were advising us, they said, pray without season. What did I say? Pray without season. Number one, when you are prayerless. Somebody said, when you are prayerless. We are advised in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. Somebody should read that for me. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. It says, pray without season. Now, if you look at Luke chapter 22, verse 46, Jesus told his disciples, pray that you enter not into what? Temptation. Luke chapter 18, verse 1, what did he say? He said, men ought to pray always and not to faint. Why is prayer so necessary? Jesus knows the place where you are. Amen. Amen. Prayer is very important in the life of a child of God. Now, out of all this reason, we are going to enlighten a light out today. You are going to look at the one that has been affecting you. Amen. We pass through one challenges or the other. Almost everybody. And you should be thanking God for the state that you are in today because the worst has not happened to you. What is the worst? A dead man does not have hope. Once a man dies, his own has ended. When they pray, when they, when, when, you know, they preach and, you know, ask some of us to give our life to Christ uh, for the word, um, the, it's, it's coming, the end is at hand. The word will soon end. 
Some will look at it, ah, this world will end. But they forget that the day that they died, their own world has ended. They forget that one. The day anybody dies, his own world has ended. So in as much as you are a living soul, you should be thanking God always that the worst has not happened to you. God has not allowed the worst to happen to you. There are things that make all this thing happen. Number one is what? Living a prayerless life. You are a Christian and you don't pray. Hmm. You are living a risky life. You are a Christian and you don't pray. Every night, the enemy, they gather together, the principality, the rulers of darkness, they gather together to plan how the next day will be. They plot out how many souls they are going to destroy by accident. They plot out how many souls they are going to, you know, be wished into their... Uh, they plot out how many souls they are going to bring, bring down. They plot out the number of success they are going to cancel. They plot out the number of deaths they will tamper with. They do this because their father... The devil is tireless. They do it now and then. And you as a child of God, you relax, you don't pray. And when something happens, you rush to the prophet. When something happens to you, you remember God. You forget that you are supposed to pray ahead of time. Just because we are the heart, the eyes of our heart is blind. If you are a child of God, these are not your eyes. Your eyes is your heart. You can be seen, but the heart is blind. When you cannot understand the things of this world, when you cannot understand the things that goes on, the simple things you see, you read the scripture, you cannot understand what means. It means that we are blind. The gods of this earth have blinded many. So if you are living a prayerless life, you don't pray. Please, God has been so merciful unto you. That the enemy has not finished you. Let us start praying, living a prayerful life. Some of us pray. But what does prayerless mean? Prayerless. Maybe your prayer is less. You need to pray more. And remember, when you start praying more, the devil will tighten his belt, fasten, will fasten his belt and attack more. So your prayer is not even enough as a child of God. Let alone you don't pray at all. Number one. Prayerlessness. We have seen it in First Thessalonians 5, verse 17, which says, Pray without season. And Luke 22, verse 46. What did Jesus say? He told the disciple, Pray so that you will not enter into temptation. Amen. Look at Job. Look at Job. The Bible makes us to understand. That whenever his children, they have party or maybe they do their birthday. After they finish celebration, Job will go and carry sacrifice and pray for God on behalf of his children. He said, Lord, I don't know. As they were celebrating, maybe they have sinned against you. Job was praying, doing continually. Pray for himself, pray for his children. That was why when the devil came to attack, Job looked at it. You know, I pray. You, know, you look at from where? He just declared it. After it's God that give and God that take it. He now finished it. Blessed be the name. You know, he didn't complain. Say, God, why? That ending statement made God. God, look, even the devil has taken everything from this man. This man thought I'm the one that took it. He's still praising me. Some people will say, ah, God, the only child you gave me, you took it away. Then why did you give me the child? In fact, some people will drop their Bible. At that time, who will get annoyed? Amen. I don't pray for something that, the kind of thing, test that came to Job to visit us. That is the only person I've seen. The only test. And Job passed it. Now, when you prepare yourself very well with prayer, the Spirit of God will always back you up to overcome every test, every temptation. Jesus said, pray so that you don't enter into temptation. That was a big temptation for Job. Assuming he caused God, he would have failed. May the Lord pass in Jesus' name. May the Lord pass in Jesus' name. So number one is what? When you are prayerless, living a prayerless life. So check yourself. 
Are you prayerful? Not just wake up in the morning, you pray, you go to bed, you pray. No. Pray without ceasing. You must pray at all times. Amen. Number two. When you starve your spirit, this is another thing that can make all this evil thing come to us. When you starve your spirit, when you don't feed your spirit with the right food at the right time, and what is this food? The word of God. Lack of Bible study. You don't study the scripture. You don't study the scripture. You don't read your Bible. If you stay without eating in a day, you see the way you feel. Two days, three days, four days, five days, you shrink. Amen. That is physically. So in as much as as a physical person, you are eating food. Even when Jesus came and wear flesh, he was still eating. Jesus was God. He came into a flesh, he was wearing flesh like us, our body. He ate. So that you have the strength. That was why when he fasted 40 and 40 nights, the devil knew he was hungry. So, in as much as you are feeding your physical body, you need to feed your spirit. Your spirit. And what is the food of the spirit? The word of God. Amen. Have you seen? Now, when you feed your spirit with the word, what will happen? Your spirit will begin to grow. Begin to grow. Begin to grow. That is why when challenges that comes to you, when you fail, it means that you are not matured enough to handle a challenge. When challenges come to you and you fail, go and check yourself. Spiritually, you are not matured enough. It's just like you, you give birth to a baby. Six months, one year, two years, three years, the baby has not stand up to walk. Five years, the baby is still like a baby. How will you feel? And seven years old, you want that baby to go and fetch water and he cannot even walk. When challenges that are supposed to be meant for adults come to children, they mess up. They don't know the right thing to do. There are some situations that come to you. You handle that situation based on your spiritual maturity. Now, how can you be matured spiritually when you are not reading the word of God? When you are not studying the word of God? Jesus said to the devil, look, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of who? God. Amen. So, number two is what? When you starve your spirit, your spirit will not be able to grow to understand spiritual things. We send um, a particular scripture for all our members, except those, those of you that your numbers were, about 80 people, their numbers were rejected by the network. A scripture for you to read weekly, Bible, you read and you pray. I know some of us do not read. How do we expect to, be, to grow and withstand challenges? Because this thing must come. These things must come. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you feed your spirit with the spiritual food at the right time, with the right food, it will begin to grow. And when challenges come, it will be able, you know, it will be able to face the challenges and overcome it. But when you starve it, what do you expect it to do? The Lord help us in Jesus' name. 1,001 reason why this evil thing happened to us. They are not the will of God. We have noted that. They are not the will of God. Then why do they happen? We are looking at the reason why they happen. Number one, prayerless life. Number two, starvation of the word of God. You can see that in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. When Jesus told the devil, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of what? Oh, God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night. Shall meditate there in day and night. 
Hey. He said, and this will bring about your prosperity. And with this you overcome. When you meditate on the book of the law. What is the book of the law? The Bible. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Mm. So you observe everything according to what is written therein. And what with this you prosper and have good success. That is the scripture. You don't prosper physically. You prosper in the spirit before it manifests. One of my students came yesterday and was telling me, ah, sir, why you have not seen me in school? Because, you know, I had a serious attack with my baby. We were all driving out. My baby of two years, about two years old. And in the car, the girl started pressing her neck before he started vomiting blood. It's not natural. It's not physical. Thank God that she's prayerful. She took up the attack the situation with prayer for the narrow hospital. Before that thing happened, something has transpired in the spirit. They are pressed and negative spirit before it happens physical. So everything that takes place in life happens spiritual before it comes to manifest in the physical realm. So when you read the word of God, you build your spirit, then you see how it begins to manifest in your life. Amen. Amen. Number three. How much do you fast? Fasting. Fasting. There was a story in the Bible. In the book of Luke chapter 5, verse 33 to 35. Luke chapter 5, 33 to 35. Do you know the story? A man brought his son to the disciples. Jesus was not around. He came. Ah, this is what with that man, that powerful man. You know, let me bring my child that is possessed so that they will heal him. Even though guy is not around, we know that he would have trained. The disciple prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. And Jesus came. He said, ah, my son has been tormented by this devil. You know, he does him like this and does him like this. I brought him to your disciple and they could not. Jesus look, oh, oh, you faithless generation. After he took the book, he turned and looked at them. You know, Jesus spoke, commanded the devil, and the devil left. Probably maybe the disciples opened their mouths. They were surprised. And we have been sweating. It is not by struggle. Jesus told them, see, if you have faith, just like mustard seed, you can command this mountain, or you leave here and go there, and it will obey you. Jesus said, you see this kind of thing I did? It is not possible. It doesn't come easy except by prayer and fasting. He said this thing doesn't come like except by prayer and fasting. Ah, some, some, some of us have not fasted for the past five years. When you fast, it, it reduces your physical flesh and makes your body, your spirit to grow out. When I traveled to my state, acquired in the year 2001, I didn't know how to read my ethic Bible. I was, you know, challenged somehow. And I was attacked that made me live in the church for two years. And I was forced. At times I was forced to fast for seven days. Dry, no water, nothing, nothing. I would look for how to sneak out. But I, I, I understood something. That any time I am on fasting, if I open the scripture and read, something I've been reading for years, I will just understand it. And it was in this time... I started reading our ethic Bible very fluently. A time came that I walked, you know, with some of the pastors when they go for program. I'll go as soon as I, as, as I was then, soon I won. That is about 17 years ago. When we go for program, the pastor will preach, I'll be interpreting. Something that was born in Lagos. I didn't know how to speak my language very well. But because I was in his presence, the first thing you know, you must fast every, in every, every week, twice at least, they will force you. I was forced. But I saw the benefit of the fasting. I began to understand the scripture. I started reading my language fluently. I was doing better than even those. So later when I came, I now realized that it was not just by because I was reading, but because at that time you are fasting, your, 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 your spirit has grown up to suppress your, your flesh. Your flesh has reduced. Your spirit has come up. And because you are reading spiritual, you are 
you are taking spiritual food, you begin to understand because the spirit is at a lot. Fasting is very good for the life for a child of God. When you fast and pray and study the scripture, you know, you understand better than when you do it when you are not fasting. Amen. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, they came to Jesus. You know, the hypocrite. He said, the disciples of John, the Pharisees, they don't, they do, they normally fast. But Jesus, you, these are the disciples, they know they fast. Do you know what Jesus told them? He said, how will the children of the bridegroom fast when the bridegroom is still there? Eh? The bridegroom said, how will they fast? He said, by the time shall come that the bridegroom shall be taken away and they will fast. Some of us are living in comfort, so we allow the comfort to distract us. I have to have everything. <laughs> Why should I fast and pray? It is like a taboo to some people. Even it's even a taboo to some pastors. Because of prosperity, you know, come the way you like. They forget about fasting. They will tell you, leave it. Our God is only God of come the way you are. It's a taboo to some men, some people to fast. Why should you fast? Why should you suffer yourself? There is a big profit when you fast. Just try it and see. You fast, you see that even if you are a fleshy man, like a young man, that you are always, you know, you know, your mind is always bringing fornication, fornication. The day you fast and keep yourself aside, that, that thing will just die in you. You, you, you won't even have the urge to show you that that time your spirit has taken over, your flesh. So we must fast once in a while in order to quench, to, to kill this flesh, to reduce it. A man of the flesh cannot please God. Amen. Now, if you combine studying the word of God and fasting together plus prayer, then you see that your spirit will grow. But when studying the word of God, fasting, prayer is absent in your life. You suffer what we call spiritual cretinism or spiritual dwarfism. Have you seen people that are very short? They don't grow. If you remove those three things, your spirit remains as a dwarf. Your spirit remains as a, a, a baby. And when a challenge that comes to you, there are challenges that demand the adult spirit to attack. That kind of person cannot do anything. You remain a baby. Spiritual cretinism. There's a difference between cretin and dwarf. If you see some people that are short, you know, big head, you know, you know this is dwarf. But you see some, they look like children, small, like Aki Amopo. I came about a cretin. When we study biology, we were made to know the reason why such things happen. There's a gland, a secret hormones, growth hormone, two glands, thyroid gland, the pituitary gland. Now, one one is short in releasing the hormone, the person becomes small. Amen. So the same thing that happened in spiritual realm. When you lack fasting in your life, you don't read your Bible, you don't pray. In the spiritual realm, you are a cretin, you are very small. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Somebody say, okay, all this evil thing will they happen to me since I don't follow God. If it's not the will of God, why are they happening? We are telling you why they are happening. We are telling you why they are happening. Some of us, some of us who think we can pray. We think we can pray. Go and analyze your prayer. If it is what Jesus asks you to pray. The Bible says we pray at times we don't receive because we pray amiss. When you are supposed to pray, for God, normally your daily needs will come. The basic needs will come. When you're supposed to pray for God to build your spiritual life, you are praying for God to give you cars and houses. When you're supposed to pray for, you know, as a student, you are in school. When you're supposed to pray for you to pass an examination, you are praying, you know, you start praying for the future you have not seen. I want to become, I want to, I am there. I will. You, you start praying amiss. As a child of God, when you are supposed to pray for God to deliver you from evil and lead you not into temptation, you leave that one and start praying for some other things that is not yet time to come. And evil and temptation are there waiting for you. And when they come, you begin to say, God, why? I'm serving you. It doesn't count how many times you carry the Bible to go, and, to go for evangelism. It doesn't count how many times you, 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 you bring out your money to invest in the house of God. It doesn't count how many times you go to the house of God to sweep and clean the benches. It doesn't count what you do for God. The fact is that, are you following what God wants you to do? Are you praying? Amen. We have looked at three now. 
prayerless life, starvation, that is lack of food of feeding the spirit, now fasting. So it is very important that we fast. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. Mark chapter 9, verse 29. Okay, let's read that. Let's read that. So we can see the benefit of fasting. Mark 9, 29. And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. That is the place I was explaining to you, why Jesus explained to them. You see, I just command. I just command the devil and it get away. It cannot happen except by what? Prayer and fasting. Amen. Number four. One of the things that make us suffer what we suffer today is where you are living therein. Where you are living therein. The place where you are living. Your daily battles, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You wrestle against principalities, powers of darkness. The world where you are living. It's not a permanent place for you. It's a temporary place you have just want to leave. This is not your place of destiny. As long as you are living on this world, in this world, you will see problems that will come. Tribulation will come. But with God, one with God can overcome them all. Amen. I say one with God can overcome them all. So all these things come because of the place you are living. The world is a polluted place. A place ruled by spiritual wickedness so this is what we even give you more reason for you to be close to god pray study the word of god be close to god because you are living in a world that is ruled by powers of darkness ephesians 6 verse 12 you can find that in ephesians 6 verse 12 then first john chapter 5 chapter 2 verse 15. number five one of the reasons that make us suffer this thing that we are suffering is because they do not love you. They hate you. Who are those that hate you? Jesus said it. He said, look, the world himself doesn't like you. They didn't like me. Because they hated me, they will hate you. So these are the, the people we are living around. The Bible makes us to understand. That the end, one of the enemy, one of the toughest enemy of a man is the they are the members of his world household. Have you seen reason why all this thing happening? But something can take care of them all. Something can take care of them all. Rejoicing evermore. Pray with praying without ceasing. And in all things that you see yourself, begin to give praise to God. But when you fail in all those things, when the small one come, you fail, then other ones start coming. You are not destined to come and live in sorrow. You are not destined to come and live in a life whereby you'll be expecting one thing from God. You know, that thing makes you sorrowful. No. Amen. Hallelujah. Number six. This is number six. As A and B. Idolatry. Normally, when we talk of idol, idol are other gods, serving other gods in place of God. Some of us are idol worshippers, but we don't know. Idolatry. The Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon together. Mammon is the god of this world. An example of mammon is what? Money. Some of us can follow something that will bring money to us than following God. When it comes to money, it's connected to business. You want to follow the, and you forsake God. You worship something more than God. That is idolatry. It's not until you go down and bow down. Now, when all these things, you call yourself a child of God. And when the devil wants to strike. What, how heavy is your account in heaven? How heavy is your prayer account? How heavy, how heavy is the good part of you? That will make God say no, they will stop. Or that will make God to just allow it. If God does not allow anything to stop, it cannot happen. God allowed the devil to tempt Job. 
God allowed it. But it's only God that was doing it. He only allowed it. There are some things you'll do. God will not allow some things to come to you. Check your life. Are you, are you qualified to be a child of God? That when someone comes to God, say no. What is God seeing in your life? Some of us prefer. Our daddy was giving us an instance the other day. You know, when they're going to church, you know, women take time to, to look beautiful. They take time. Some women, maybe when they have left the, they have left the house, they've gone far. They now remember that they not put on their earring. They have to go back. They are late for church already. They have to go back home and pick it. Even if earring is allowed for you to wear, even if it's a good thing, even if it's allowed, but because you know you are late for church, you still went back home to pick it. You don't have reverence for God. You worship your earring more than God. You worship material things more than God. You ask to work on Sunday. But there is option. If you know you will not come on Sunday, we we'll deduct from two thousand naira. You say no, I must go. You leave the house of God and go to work on Sunday. They they won't sack you. They said if you won't, they will deduct your money. Some is not even some is even over time. Working on Sunday is even over time. Some places, if you come, you gain extra money. Because of that, you fail to go and worship your God and go to work. You now serve money. You prefer money to God. This is idolatry. Now, when the devil will strike, tell me what will give God a mind. Say, I oh, know this is my son. Let me wave it. Are we seeing it now? So when you are serving God, you are claiming you are serving God. You are a Christian. Check your life very well. Where does this one? Where does it? I know where it affects me. In everything I'm saying now, I know where it touches me. So you should know where it will touch you. You make amendment and see. Our prayer point last week was, Oh Lord, do a new thing in my life. And this week, just keep your phone on. We are going to give you the prayer point for this week. This one also came by revelation. As many of you that will, you know, believe in that scripture and read, this one came by revelation. So we'll communicate the prayer point to you that you need to pray. Amen. At times we pray, God doesn't hear our prayer. Because of what? Idolatry. Where is your mind? That is A. So 6B. What is your priority in life? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things where you define shall follow. Matthew 6, 33. What is your priority? Seek ye first God. And his righteousness, his kingdom. Try to become a child of God before other things. But some of us are pushing other things before we now look for God. Then when evil come, tell me the mouth you use and call it. See, there are some people that when evil things happen to them, they, 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 they can't pray because they know they are filled. I pray that the Lord will use this word to transform us all today in Jesus' name. These are the reasons why some of these things happen to us. They are not God's will. They are not God's will. The enemy is always there. And the last one will shock you. Amen. Number seven. When you neglect. That is negligence to the gentle little voice whispering to your hearing. Negligence. To the gentle little voice whispering to your hearing. Some of us, we are qualified in other things. We pray, we fast, we study the Bible. But this is where the devil also catches us. When you want to do something, you want to go into business. Ah, this business will bring forth money. And after praying, the Holy Spirit now whisper to you. You see that business? Don't. You hear it all. But you just say, ah, no, no. You begin to imagine the profit. And you say, you neglect. And by the time you invest money, the money goes. You now remember, ah, the God was telling me. God even showed me. That is negligence to what? To the gentle little voice whispering to your ear. So 
show you that even everybody, see, every, nobody's, nobody's exempted. Even if you're a powerful prayer warrior, watch your life. At times, you hear some, you know, at times it may come to your mind. Analyze very well. But you know what deceives us? When we look at the gain, when we're going to read, at the gain. No, no, let me go, let me go, let me at that time, the only thing is ministering you, but you don't want to listen. The Bible says, in the book of Proverbs, that a wise man foresees evil and hides himself. But a simple person just walk on and fall into the evil and is being punished. It's not a sin now, not a believer, a simple person, innocent, you are innocent. Many innocent people are falling to evil. When I pray, a prayer that my head no go carry you know, an anonymous evil. Because they are very simple. They are not wise. Amen. What is wisdom? When the world speaks to you, you don't understand. Go back and pray. Zero your mind. Zero your mind. It happens to we young guys. You see a beautiful lady. You want to marry. You now go to the altar and start praying. You are praying, oh Lord, if this person is my... At that time, we are praying. If this person is my wife, Lord, let me know. At that time, your mind has cleaved to that person. You are asking God. If in your mind, you already accepted that already. Now, you are expecting to hear from God for God to say no. How will you hear when God is talking to you when your mind is telling you yes, 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 yes? Negligence to the gentle little voice. When you are praying, you are asking God for God's will. And you carry two things. Lord, which one should I do? Should I do this? Or do this. But your mind is telling you, ah, I like this one, I like this one, I like this one. And when God is telling you, go for this one, you will not be able to because your mind has already gone to this. But when you love God and put your mind, you depend, your total dependency on God, depending on God, you set your mind. You don't put your mind in those things. You see that, you hear that voice very clearly again and make the right choice. May God help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You cannot do it by your own self. That is number, number seven. Number seven. Negligence to that gentle little voice. That is why some of us suffer what I did will regret. You know, remember, God showed me in the time of MMM. Many of you put your money. It was investment. I assume I had the opportunity, I would have done it. You can ask my wife. She asked me, I put for me. I use that money for something else. I told her I put, I don't put. She was counting days for me. The, before the day, they will pay that money. So this is happening. I told her, I relax. Uh, after that day, I now gave her the money with interest. She thought I put the money. I used the money for something else. Because I was not convinced. But as you know, I was following, looking at, ah, now the profits, they will... I would have, I was not convinced. She gave me the money, I didn't put it, and as soon as I put it, it's an end of story. Amen. Investment, if I have the opportunity, I will do it and, but we should not be carried away by mammon, the gods of this world. When you prefer the gods of this world to God, that is idolatry. When you like money, other things more than God. Amen. Amen. Now, let me not take you far. Finally, the final point. Okay, before that, let me give you another point again. This is one of the points that have been allowing this thing to happen to us. Seeking the hand of God instead of his face. This is, this is a topic for a particular message. Seeking the hand of God instead of his face. Some people come to the house of God just to seek the hand of God. They are not coming to seek God's face. What does it mean to seek God's face? When you are going to seek God, to worship God, you want to know God, you want to know Him, you want to be close to Him, you seek His face. But when you are going, ah, let me go to that church, ah, you know, that prophet, you, you want God to do miracles in your life. You only want, you are only interested in what God will give you. After God has given you. So in that case now, you are only looking for what God can give you. You are not going to look for, you are not going to worship God. You are not going to know God, as Paul said, that I may know thee. You only want where God will bless you. And you, you go back. That is why some people, see, God has known, some people cannot worship God. 
if God bless them, they will go bless like this. They will just go back. If they come to church, they will tell you, why should I go to church? <laughs> people will go to church and then they pour pass. And people say that. Ah, people will go and then pour pass. As I did like this, I'm better. If God bless some of us, we will not go to church. We will just relax. When we are tired of sitting at home, you just throw to the church. As part of changing the environment, you are not going to see God's face. You are going to see God's hand. Check your life everywhere. You have been worshipping God. Is it a problem that I brought to this church? Or you really want to know him and worship him? So you have to amend. That is where God will now stand for you and say, this is my son. When evil comes, you will wave it. But when evil comes and God allows it, then you should ask, ask yourself the question, not asking God. Amen. Amen. The Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. Now, do you love him? Do you love him? That is another point again. If you love him, do you keep his commandments? The Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, why did I say this? Go and read Romans chapter 8, verse 28. People say, eh, all this thing is happening. The Bible says that all work it together for good to them that love God. When evil things happen, and you are telling me they work it together for good. They work together for good. I will ask you a question. For who? It's not for everybody. To them that love God. God will make your difficult situation to work together and bring you a testimony if you love him. But when you don't love him, how do you know you love him? Are you keeping his commandments? Amen. Then finally, these things happen to us because we are children of God. We are believers. So don't ask yourself a question. When you, when you have tested evil before, don't question God. They happen to you because you are a child of God. How? The devil, since the day you become a child of God, you are standing in the war front. You are battling with the enemy. So you must put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to withstand. Blows will come from the enemy because you say you are a child of God. The enemy will stand to attack you. That is why they happen. So you must be able. God said temptation has not come to you except those ones that you are meant to bear. But I am faithful. I will always make out a way of escape. If you have done your own part, God will do his part. I pray that the Lord, in his infinite mercy, will open our eyes of understanding, our heart of understanding, that we will overcome through the word in Jesus' name. Now, when you find yourself in the midst of what you have just said now, what should you do? Or if you find yourself that this thing has happened to me, what should you do? Should you cry? Question God? Complain? Get worried? Drop your Bible? Run to the devil? Quarrel with yourself? Get angry? Or should you give up? No! You should praise God. After praising him, present your petition before him. When you're passing through anything in life, don't get worried. Just praise him. Thank him. One of the prayer points of praise is that thank God that the worst has not happened to me. You appreciate God. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Then when you praise him, you now go into prayer. Petition. What do you want God to do for you? He will now listen. You have praised him first. You have given what you want. Even before you start telling him what you need, that praise would have invited him into your condition. Praises. Invite God's presence into our condition. I pray that the Lord will use this word to refine our hearts, to transform our life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Bow down your heads for prayer. First of all, I appreciate God. You have known the reason why some of this happened to us. If you are passing through anything in life, begin to appreciate God now because God has not allowed the worst to happen to you. I appreciate him. For that is the will of God for you. He wants you to always appreciate him. Father, your children have listened to your word. And we believe that this word will open up their inner mind. That they understand your word. As we appreciate you now, O oh Lord God, receive our appreciation. For this is your will for us. We pray, O oh Lord God, 
Let this word of God have a place in our life. Use this word to do a new thing in our life. In Jesus' name we pray.